No. No. You want to study it. That's why I'm running you guys through the whole thing. All right. Yes. Um, Trey is out. Okay. All right. So the last question was, how many moles are in 0.15 liters of a 13 molar solution? So we have this information, this information. We're solving for moles. So we're going to, that means that we're back to the triangle thing. So we're going to cover up the word moles. When we did that, we're left with molarity times liters. So I'm going to go ahead and write my setup. Moles is equal to molarity times liters, and I'm going to plug and check, all right? Sorry for all of it being all over the place. All right, so we're going to have moles is equal to a molarity of 13. So I'm going to have 13 times 0 0.15 liters. Okay, so when I multiply those two, we do get the answer, um, I think, 1.95 moles of solute. Solidity curves, all right? Um, just remember that it's always talking about 100 grams of water, so 100 grams of solvent. So our y-axis isn't talking about that. It's talking about grams of solute, right? Our x-axis is talking about temperature, and then each of these lines are solubilities, okay? They are solubilities. All right, <clears throat> this is where um, I kind of recommend it to you. Having highlighters will be helpful. Um, having a ruler will be helpful, and I, re I definitely recommend that when it comes down to it tomorrow, you use those resources, okay? All right, so at what temperature um, will the solubilities of NaCl and KNO3 What's, what temperature are they equal, right? So what, we're, what I'm asking you here is when do they cross? When do they cross each other, okay? So we're going to find NaCl. So looking at my little graph, I see that NaCl kind of maintains its solubility pretty consistently. And I'm going to look at um, KNO3. That one kind of curves up like this, all right? And so um, we're trying to figure out where they cross, at what temperature, right? And so what temperature is talking about the x-axis? So once I find where they cross right here, I'm going to look down at my x-axis and see where I'm hitting. So I see that I have 20 right here, 40 over here. That means in the middle is 30. So what would you guys say that one is? 25, 26, yeah, okay. I'm actually going to say 27 because I feel like it's over to the right a little bit more. Um, so anywhere in that range is fine, okay. It's probably going to be more of a multiple choice or I will be grading it with a range in mind. So and as long as you're really, 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 really close. All right, <clears throat> at 90 degrees Celsius, what mass of KBr will be soluble in 100 grams of water? Is the 100 grams of water needed information? No, we're not going to do anything with it, right? It's just saying, hey, make sure you're using this graph, okay? So don't worry about that part, but we're going to look at 90 degrees Celsius, so that's going to be across the bottom. That's my x-axis. We're going to read the y-axis, okay? A big mistake that I keep seeing is people kind of jumbling that, and they're reading off the wrong one, okay, because the numbers kind of stay the same on both sides. So just be careful. Slow your brain down. Make sure you're paying attention. So we're going to look at 90 degrees Celsius. So that's down across the bottom. So 90 is right about here. So I'm just going to kind of color the line all the way up. Okay, so 90 degrees Celsius, how much KBr? So KBr is this one that kind of goes across. Okay, so I'm going to circle where I'm looking. And then I'm going to read it across. So I'm going to go ahead and use my ruler because it makes it a little bit easier. And I will see that it hits right about there. So what would you guys say for that one? Almost 100. So I would, you're safe saying like 98, 97, whichever. Okay. But 100 would probably be fine. <clears throat> okay. All right. 
All right, number 20. It says if a solution contains 120 grams at 20 degrees Celsius. So I'm giving you two pieces of information. So make sure you're paying attention which one is which, right? So 120 grams, that's my y-axis again. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, because I messed up. You're right. Sorry. Thank you. That was a good catch. Sorry. 98 grams to 100 grams. Because I've been doing it all day. My <laughs> mind got jumbled. All right. So if a solution contains 120 grams at 20 degrees Celsius. So this is my y-axis, and then 20 degrees Celsius is my x-axis. So we're going to slow down. We're going to look at it. So 120 grams. So I'm going to look right about here. And I'm going to match it up to 20 degrees Celsius so right here. So I'm going to kind of see where these two are going to intercept, right? And as soon as I figure that part out, so you can use two fingers, kind of make a big dot, then put your pencil down and pay attention, all right? So NaClO3, that's this curve that's kind of going and gets cut off on your paper, okay? So in relation to the curve, is this dot above it? or below it? It is well above it, right? So that means what kind of what kind of solution is this? Super saturated, saturated, or unsaturated? Okay, so this is where we split half and half, right? Is this super saturated? Um, this is the thing that I kind of made a point to tell you guys on Wednesday was remember um, the interpretation of this, this fact, the way to think of it, all right? is you're saying where is that dot um, related to the official information, which is the curve, right? Those situations, those parameters, how do they relate to what it should have been, which was the line, okay? So it's above it, so therefore it's super saturated, <coughs> all right? All right, <clears throat> the next part says which solution is least soluble at 20 degrees Celsius? Um, so we've already kind of marked that line, which will be helpful. When I say least soluble versus most, least means the lowest, most would mean the highest. So I'm going to look at 20 degrees Celsius. I'm going to find each of these uh, lines that they're saying. So NaClO3 is this one that curves up. So I will say that hits right here. The next one, KNO3, that's the one that curved down here. It's way down here. So out of these two, this one has the least. So I'm going to go ahead and cross out that answer choice. All right. Then I have NaCl. So comparing again to this bottom one, NaCl is up here. So comparing to that, this one is lower still. So NaCl I'm going to cross out. So this is how to kind of approach it with a multiple choice question, just so you guys know. All right. All right. KBR. We're going to pay attention to that little... Line. KBR is way up here. This is KNO3 down here. Again, KNO3 is still the lowest. So that's your answer. Okay, so notice how I did it kind of process of elimination. You're just comparing the two. You're trying to figure out which one is the lowest the whole time. All right, so before we turn the page over, um, I'd like you to add one additional topic to it. And that would be start at like 140 and just kind of make a, oh man, this pencil's been crazy. All right. Just make a curve that is going down your page, right? So I kind of started up here and I curved down. All right. So if I were to label this NH3, what state of matter is this? According to this graph, it's the only one that's decreasing. So which state of matter will decrease solubility as you increase temperature. Think of hot sodas. Gas, yeah, right? So this is a gas. So write this fact down so that you have it to study. Gas, oh my gosh, I'm done with this pencil. All right, we're writing with pen again. Gas will decrease in solubility as temperature increases. Okay. Gases will decrease in solubility as temperature increases. Okay. 